Can you name another time in American history where we've invited someone into the U.S. Congress chamber to criticize uh, a president's foreign policy? I can't think of one. To criticize a president's foreign policy and offer an alternative. I've never heard of that done before. Have you? I, I think that it was appropriate that he come here. I thought he was very interesting to the president. And why now? I don't why do we know. break a tradition? Why don't we do something all of a sudden for the first time in history, let somebody from a foreign government come into our governing chamber and well, tell us the president's Chris, wrong? Uh, Chris. Right wing Israeli politics. He supported the war in Iraq. No one seriously believes he supports a two-state solution because he keeps raising the bar. He says, well, it's, I want the Arab states not only to recognize Israel, but they now have to sign on and say it should be a Jewish state. I mean, he keeps raising the bar. No one thinks he wants a two-state solution. I, it seems to me that he doesn't agree with the president fundamentally fundamentally well, all across the board on all kinds of policies and to bring him into that chamber and say here's your chance to blow the bugle against the president's foreign policy was unprecedented publicly so no one seriously believes he supports a two-state solution because he keeps raising the bar he says well it's i want the arab states not only to recognize israel but they now have this bar no one thinks he wants a two-state solution it seems to me that he doesn't agree with the president fundamentally, fundamentally well, all across the board on all kinds of policies and to bring him into that chamber and say, here's your chance to blow the bugle against the president's foreign policy was unprecedented by Mr. Boehner to do so. And my point is that you're, what you, the, the uh, case that you just made had nothing to do with what I'm, what I'm talking about. He has a platform. It's not like the guy can't get a me megaphone. It's not like he couldn't gone on 60 Minutes. It's not like he could have spoken somewhere, couldn't have spoken somewhere else. He went before Congress on the invitation of the Republicans for getting involved in this destructive politics and undermining World the president. Leaders do World that. leaders do that. Great. I mean, That's why fantastic. is this so shocking to It's you? not shocking. It's disappointing. Disappointing and possibly horrifying what we saw yesterday. Horrifying. Yeah. I'd like to congratulate uh, Speaker Boehner and Prime Minister Netanyahu on a very impressive bit of political theater. This speech was straight out of the Dick Cheney playbook. This was fear mongering at its ultimate. Netanyahu basically said that the only acceptable deal was a perfect deal or an ideal deal. Uh, it's like the child who says, I want to go to Disneyland every day, eat ice cream and drink Coca-Cola every day, and not go to school. I think that's a responsible position for a head of state to take. He, I agree. He can put out that view. He doesn't need to put it out in front of Well, but that's the world stage, though. though. That's, that's the big and I don't, And I don't think it's appropriate for him to be doing it. I don't think it's appropriate for the Republicans to be having him here so close to the Israeli right, elections. Okay. Well, I don't care about the Israeli election. Quickly, in, in politics, in this country or anywhere, no. I, I, I cannot yeah, put them quick. In response to your question, can anybody believe this? Yeah, I think there are several people in Washington, D.C. who can believe it based on the premise that they strongly believe and have believed Bibi Netanyahu is a liar. As President Obama... Bibi Netanyahu is a liar. As President Obama wow. would say, Prime Minister Netanyahu showed some chutzpah. <laughs> <laughs> would he say that? There's a prominent, is that what they say in Chicago? Say in Chicago, a prominent West Bank leader is quoting the Wall Street Journal saying what Netanyahu did was, quote, disorienting and zigzagging. Zigzagging, you know, miles. I, as I said on this show. Well, in the Obama administration will say is for him, it's never right now. It's never the right time. It's never the uh, right time. And, and it, more than one uh, high-ranking State Department official and administration official will accuse him of cowardice, political cowardice, time and time again. It's something you hear constantly from the White House. And the White House is also whacking that Netanyahu for those comments that he made, really controversial comments he made about Israeli Arabs right as voters were heading to the polls. I think that it is certainly a pretty cynical tactic, and it is no, there's no doubt that it's divisive. And it is a pretty transparent attempt to marginalize uh, Arab Israeli citizens and their right to participate in the election. See, I find, I find this incredible, because I understand if I were in the White House, I'd be really angry. No doubt I'd be angry, I'd be angry about the speech, I'd be angry about Netanyahu not meeting with Democrats. I, th I mean, you could, the, so I don't want anybody to mis misread me. The White House has all the reasons in the world to be angry 
at Benjamin Netanyahu cynicism. I totally get it. Who at this point really is taking the... Why is the President Obama taking the hits for this horror show? Given what we've learned in the Wall Street Journal today, given what we saw happening in Congress, and given what we saw in the run-up to the Israeli election. Can you please help me out here? Could you please cut through the BS? I don't, I don't know if I can help you out, Mika. I, I, I just want to know what you're all afraid of. I really, I do. I, I, I don't understand. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. afraid that, I'm afraid, Mika, of pretending that this is only the fault of one party. I'm really, waiting so for obviously somebody the, to actually come the close to stating what really has happened here. Well, the Israelis spied on Americans to, to divide Americans. That's not a very good thing. It's not a healthy thing for an ally to do. It seems to me that every time we talk about Benjamin Netanyahu's tactics, from literally uh, flipping on the two-state solution, some would say perhaps misleading people or lying, um, race baiting, or some would say a lesser version of, and now this spying in for, what why are you, know, you laughing? I would say some would say a stronger version of the, Yes, the, I, the, I'm I, trying believe, to be, I, believe, I believe David Remnick referred to it as Everybody racism. says, John Howman, and I saw you stumbling, everybody, when you, stumbling? when you put it out in front, everyone says, yes, but... Uh, yes, but, 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 but. Our relationship with Israel is what it is. And Benjamin Netanyahu has been deceptive. Uh, he has been argumentative. Uh, he has been bitterly opposed to most of the goals. The time since an Israeli ambassador to the United States has worked hard to do so much damage thank to you. the relationship between the two. Okay, yes, thank you, good. Mike Barnacle. You have Christa. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, let, let, me just, let me just... We even get to Iran going nuclear. The House of Representatives and the Speaker of the House already went nuclear on the President of the United States by establishing his own foreign policy. John Boehner is Speaker of the House. He's not Secretary of State. He's not President. And he invites, behind the scenes, the head of Israel... And plays into their hands. Israel, to come to the United States. And by the way, Bibi, don't tell the President we asked you. Well, and to use Matt's own analogy, I mean, the notion of the United States for decades... Seriously for, using a different set of rules, well, I have one, to one say. One thing is for sure.